Snaps addresses drivers, and the Linux kernel drops some old processors. Windows lets you spin your own distro and Cloudflare has went full 1.1.1.1. I'm not making that up. Apple is breaking up with Intel, and Venn shows you how to LGC. Yeah, d don't, don't stick around for that part. It's going to be horrible. But don't worry, <laughs> because it's another great day for Linux, everyone. Let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back and watch that car, because I have windows open because it's summertime. <laughs> Actually, relax, and we're going to talk about some Linux <clears throat> stuff. It is summertime, but it's summertime in the South, which means, for me, I have possibly 48 hours before it gets hot. So I'm trying to enjoy mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I have the windows in the house. It's that brilliance <laughs> like that. Uh, what's going on, Jill? You're back. Yes, I am. And I'm so very excited to be here. I can't believe this. I'm, I'm now a permanent co-host on LGC full time. That is just so awesome. <laughs> thing, man, you definitely get the uh, you zoom and enhance shot. It's kind of been pulled back a little bit for the uh, video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked hard on getting a nice angle. <laughs> I got a nice tripod and camera. <laughs> right on. Pedro, what's going on, man? I finally ran out the battery on the uh, 8 bit do teeny tiny controller. Wait a minute, you've only had uh, that for like three weeks and you've noped the battery? No, I noped the battery, just went through the whole charge uh, yesterday because I hadn't charged it in like a week. It's just, oh, it still works. And I was uh, I was playing, admittedly, Dark Souls 2. Mm -hmm. so I'm a bit of a heretic. Uh, <laughs> it's like, why isn't. <laughs> I, why can't I move? I'm dead. Okay. I just figured, oh, it ran out of battery. You know, how long okay. did it take you to figure out it was the batteries versus just Dark Souls? <laughs> I stopped moving. I was moving around trying to dodge stuff. It's like, why, why am I not moving? I'm dead. Now, like, real question, your Steam controller. These batteries yes. have been going strong for five months? It's... Yeah, it's been three months on this one since I last charged the Amazon uh, rechargeable batteries. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, it's so it just goes on. <laughs> what what type of battery does the um, wireless dog bone have in it? Just like a single? It's uh, it's uh, <laughs> just a built-in uh, oh. lipo battery. It's oh, really okay. really tiny. It's like six hundred and fifty uh, milliamps. Mm -hmm. So eh. Okay, all right. Cool. That, that makes more sense. Then it's probably got one of those little gel lipos in it. Yeah. 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 That's the thing. I look forward to when that explodes, and I hope it does, uh, <laughs> and we're able to record it. <laughs> LGC, oh, and, um, cares. Actually, LGC cares. I actually went somewhere special this last week. Okay. Um, I, I, I attended the Open Networking Summit North America here in Los Angeles, put on by the Linux Foundation. Actually, last Thursday, I was sick, and I went. I, I, had, I had to make an appearance. And the Linux Foundation um, uh, gave Linux Chicks LA a diversity grant for the event, just like they did for OSS Summit last year. And the nice. cool thing is, is I, I, it was awesome. So I got to see uh, the Vint, Vint Surf keynote. He's known as one of the fathers of the internet. And he talked about the importance of software-defined networking and open standards. So it was it was a really awesome keynote, and I had to get there no matter how, you know, how, how bad I felt. <laughs> so I actually was there a few hours, and um, so saw a couple really good keynotes, and I saw another one by VMware that was really good. And then I got a bunch of swag and then had to come home because I was feeling pretty ill. <laughs> But I did it. I I went to downtown on on Lyft and came back and and three hours, did it. But I had to be there. <laughs> right, nice, <laughs> right. <laughs> so how about we, we just get, quit putting it off? I, I know what we're doing because no no one wants to talk about Microsoft. But, but hey, it's a Linux news show. Let's talk about Microsoft. Right off the bat, too, man. This yeah, is like real I know. Uh, this comes from Ars Technica. All this business in our show notes. And they're rapid about bringing your own Linux to Windows with their new open source tool from Redmond. Yeah, this is a thing, man. And, you know, I know everyone's first thought is like embrace. <laughs> this is a WSL distro launcher. It's aimed kind of at two groups of distribution owners that want to basically 
get their business in the Microsoft store. You can do that yeah. with this and you can sideload too, because I mean, it's also set up for developers where you can do your own custom distributions and just kind of put that in without worrying about getting it into the windows store. Just the fact that there's going to be Linux distributions in the windows store, gives me the heebie jeebies. And, uh, mm. I, I don't know, man. I, honestly can't comment a lot on this because this angers and confuses doesn't really anger me but i'm so far removed and i'm not saying this is not a humble brag whatsoever is i don't understand why 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 this needs to be a thing pedro can you uh, help me i mean it, it it can be a thing especially uh since now you can load arts onto the wsl <laughs> and break your windows install with it so it's great I <laughs> I don't know. It's like when when you think you get Arch in Windows Ten. I'm just thinking of like the Simpsons with the monkeys with the knife fight and the singularity. Just it just happens. Like whoosh. Joe, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on this? I don't know. Oh, well, I used to think it was really creepy, but now I, I've changed my opinion a bit. And it's uh, a lot of this has to do actually with the last scale too, where we mm -hmm. had the the Microsoft talk, but. Microsoft is really having a hard time understanding Linux and and how how you know to integrate it in their in their system and make quote money off of it. Mm -hmm. So they don't really understand. They're having a kind of fumbling around. And to me, this this really, I mean, the fact that there even Linux is is a subsystem in Windows as really demonstrates that we have won the war. We've won we've won the war. Linux has won the war. And we have unleashed the penguins, and there's no stopping us. And Microsoft can't penetrate or change the GPU because it is protected by law. So we we do have that going for us. So I've been ever since scale, I've been really feeling more secure about 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 us, uh, uh, our operating system, and and the importance in the community, and um, that Microsoft uh, really can't touch us right now. <laughs> I do have that theory that the Microsoft is genuinely going into a services company like IBM. I, yeah. I, I know I beat that horse to death. And you're like, shut up, Van. You say that every week. I do. <laughs> but it's something that I see, you know, with the Zura and stuff like maybe you're stuck. Like, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I apologize. Every time I try to apply a logical thought to this, I don't know enough about it. Someone sent in some feedback for next week. And it's my thing is yeah. some logic Microsoft. I don't understand. Yeah, this. My, Microsoft as a corporate entity, they realize that Linux. Oh, in the Pedro, corporate Pedro, world, I, I get they why they're doing it. I don't understand what <laughs> yeah. the use cases are. That's oh just... yeah, no, yeah, no. That uh, yeah, do send us some feedback on that one. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Something we can all play about is Cloudflare. Good guy, Cloudflare. They've been doing a lot of good lately. I don't know. Maybe they uh, have stolen stuff from you personally or something. You have a vendetta against them. Personally, I don't. But they've rolled out a DNS server to which I think collectively most people said, how did you get that? Because that's right. The DNS is 1.1.1.1. And they claim <laughs> it's the fastest privacy first consumer DNS server Oh no! Um, I'm using it right it now. It will be the fastest for about two weeks. Then everyone will get on it, <laughs> and it'll become just as slow as Google's. A <laughs> uh, little bit of a life hack. They say it's faster than Google's, which I normally use. That they also provide the IPv6 yeah. DNS servers, which I went ahead and plugged in uh, this afternoon or this morning, depending on how you look at it. But the article kind of goes through other one thing. But one thing that I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, was a lot of blocks for DNS blocking. Don't know about this right now, Pedro. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're being filtered or anything like that, uh, plugging in that quad one could get you around uh, certain web zones. Just saying. Yeah. You might want to throw that down. But one thing I'm curious about is like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I had to go double check this because Cisco uses 1.1.1.1 for a gang of their captive portal stuff. And mm -hmm. that is going to make some unlucky in men's lives very interesting very soon. <laughs> Maybe not. I added the Cloudflare DNS and now I can't access the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Everything returns the uh, the Cisco portal. <laughs> oh. 
It, it's neat, man. I traditionally use Google, not because I really enjoy feeding Google all the data. It's just easy to remember and it's easy to set up. Mm -hmm. Jill, you said you used uh, what, OpenDNS? Yeah, OpenDNS and freedns.afraid.org. Mm -hmm. And actually, the reason for the, the numbers, it's because it's April 4th, so the fourth month of the year. So it's 1111. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, and April 1st. But they, of course, it wasn't an April Fool's joke, as we know, but they were releasing it on April 1st. So that's why. It, hmm. Yeah. I mean, it works. I haven't had any issues with it. There might be slight. Then again, it's Cloudflare. It's going to be a. Uh, I mean, we use yeah. Cloudflare for our CDN, and um, I haven't had any problems with it. But let's see. We got that. That that's one way to get around things. But VPN clients. Let's talk about that yes. for a second. That's the other way to get around things. And uh, let's say you are, are like me and you just use whatever GUI client your VPN host gives you because, hey, it works and, you know, lazy. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe you'd like to hide it away a little bit more. And, uh, well, there's a little tool. If you're using the Proton VPN, there's a command line mm -hmm. interface that you can use. And it, they give you on the, uh, the GitHub page, they give you all of the flags that you can start it with. There's the usual connect, the IP, so you can see your current public IP address. There's, um, it lets you update the VPN as you're going along. It, it's compatible with Linux and Mac OS. I don't like see a this Windows right there. there from the, you know, the CLI. I like <laughs> that in curses type display of like, you know, just give me everything that's available. I mean, I guess they want to have something yeah. like yeah. a GUI, but since it's all terminal, yeah, and curses will work. <laughs> hmm. No, I, I'm yeah. happy with this. Uh, Get admit, I, so why don't people just configure it in their <clears throat> router to which Pedro retorted? Yeah, most people are just using their the router that the ISP gave them, so you can't. Mm, yeah, this is also true. That's neat, though. Command line yeah. tools for, but this is. What I'm really happy about is that it's nice to see. I, I don't know anything about this particular VPN service provider, is but it's nice to see somebody offering tools for Linux users versus what we've seen for the last two decades of the mm -hmm. support consisted of, yeah, technically it works, but guess what? You're running Linux, you can figure it out, right? Wink. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, here's the server, here's the thing you need to connect, just sort it. Hmm. Pretty cool. Uh, new drivers yeah. dropped on us last week, Pedro. And yes. they, they kind of work, question mark? They uh, work all right-ish, unless uh, you're still unlucky, one of the unlucky Chrome users that is still stuck with the herky-jerk that Chrome is prone to do with the 390 series of the NVIDIA drivers. They finally... A couple of weeks ago, uh, Aaron finally went, oh, yeah, no, I can see it now. I'm tracking this issue internally now, so we'll try to get it sorted. But this driver, 390.48, does not sort that issue. It does sort the other issue, which they describe as the uh, further improved fix for occasional flicker when using X driver's comp composition pipeline. That wasn't occasional. That was recurring that was there the whole time it's also further improved mm -hmm. but not completely yes. sorted i notice it when we record the credits for the patrons and stuff like that at the end of the show mm -hmm. if you watch the video version it's not 100 percent. and on top of that it's not all there yet yeah the chrome herky jerk is not i mean it, it's still there in spades to the point where if i'm going to be mm -hmm. using chrome i have to launch it and with no sandbox in order to make performance even remotely ex acceptable. At Firefox, no issues whatsoever. Yeah, I guess it has something to do with mm -hmm. like the canvassing uh, GL layer that uh, oh, no, Google no, uses. Sweetheart, for sweetheart, it doesn't because you can disable <laughs> that. And it, <laughs> it, it, no. Yeah. Then again, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Jill? <laughs> Uh, yeah, does it uh, does it fix the Vulcan drivers not crashing in the series engine? Uh, I have not checked yet, so I did just install mm -hmm. them, um, but I have not checked that. Ooh. That was a problem problem as of a few weeks ago on uh, LGC when we were playing in the after shows, mm -hmm. and 
and and so it I froze everybody's box tests. at some point. Yes, <laughs> it didn't yeah. lock my box. I was running the server. <laughs> in all fairness, but it did go psychedelic technicolor. It, oh yeah, the the textures were just gone, and it was just oh look, lens flare, neat. But then again, <laughs> you're, you're running a beta branch, and Crow Team's like this stuff might not work, and uh, yeah. that's a uh, completely understandable because I feel like Google. Like, I know this is going to sound weird. Stick with me. Is <laughs> kind of ruined everyone's expectation of what a beta is yeah, with their yeah. products. Because, <laughs> <Chrome> beta is <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> right. Or Gmail it's, was they're always, for like, what, six years before it came out as a mm-hmm. finished product? And it was like, oh, yeah. no, everything should just work because the Google stuff does. I like, no, no, not necessarily. So snaps and video drivers don't yes. sound like something that should ever dwell in the same house <laughs> together, but could be a good idea maybe it kind of has to happen if you are to have snaps as a an actual contender uh for the universal packaging thing uh which i guess was the point when it first started so with snap 2.32.2 sounds like a gnome 2 release right there uh, <laughs> or a kernel release um they finally, uh, if you have a Snap application that pulls libgl1, you no longer break the sandbox because it lets you use your system's uh, NVIDIA drivers. If you have the NVIDIA drivers installed, it lets you use your system's libgl and not break that sandbox. And this was always one of the things that had me sort of just like, okay, so you're going all in for the sandboxing stuff and you're going all in by isolating the package and everything it needs it's completely separate from the system it can run anywhere that's great but how's libgl gonna work if you're going to be pulling libgl like you would in a game um how, how's that sandbox going to work y- you can't that's a fugue point right there but i guess actively uh, uh actively including it and coding for it specifically minimizes the chances that anything will escape the sandbox if that is a concern. So that's good. That's really good, actually. I see this is going to oh, be rolling yeah. out on 18.04. And, but yes. 18.04 is going to still support app, right? Yeah. Okay. That, that was... <laughs> I don't think they're getting rid of devs anytime soon. <laughs> hey, man, some, sometimes distributions just want to watch the world burn, son. So... <laughs> they're not Fedora. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, Jill? Yeah, yeah. I was really happy about this announcement because I really think it's going to have Ike, help Ike Doherty work on this Steam Snap integration so that, that games just run out of, out of the box really easily. Because um, as it is right now... Um, the, the Mesa drivers, yeah, work beautifully if you're using Radeon um, AMD cards. But um, with NVIDIA integrate integration and with with Steam with the Snap, it would just everything would make with the working hmm. easily. Yeah, That'd be great. Um, I'm still sitting back, way up on the hill with my popcorn, watching <laughs> Snap at this point. I, I'm not participating in the party. I, I jumped in the party too early and I got burned a little bit. Like, yeah, this is not ready. <laughs> So I'm going to refrain from commenting on it. Um, what do we got? Uh, well, this isn't early. This is uh, coming very, very late. But maybe a good thing? Quite possibly, man. Uh, CPU yeah. be gone. That's right. Uh, Linux kernel maintainers have taken the decision to go ahead with dropping support for old CPU architectures. 417 will lose over 500 wet stinky lines. 500,000, I should say. Code mm-hmm. as a result for highly popular architectures such as Blackfin, Chris, <laughs> FRV, M32R, oh no, not you, Metag, and MN10300s, to which you get a resounding, uh, like, what, what, seriously, Vin, did you just have what? a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I understand. Sometimes. Yeah, it's just cleaning this up, man. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there, because immediately I control F, and I was like, Saber, which is your old son, Solaris, you know, not Solaris, but Sun Architecture, Spark 2, stuff like that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, that's still in there. I don't care. Uh, th- this is nothing to fret about, is it? It, it could be. 
because uh, uh, as uh, at Arn Bergman, uh, he starts out the thing by saying, the series is rather long and conflicts in trivial ways with lots of subsystem trees. You probably want yeah. to pull it uh, either really early in the merge window or really late. So it could break some other stuff down the line. Uh, as far as they could test, it's mostly trivial uh, fixes that they will have to account for. Oh, look, these um, architectures are no longer supported, so stub those out. But yeah, uh, will, remains to be seen what 4.16 is going to break. Well, Joe, you... Yeah, yeah. So these are actually processors for older embedded systems. Mm -hmm. And some mm -hmm. of those uh, systems I have in my computer room. So I'll just have to use an older older kernel, <laughs> but I but, but yeah, I have four fifteen still older. supports them, so it's fine. yeah. Well, one of the things exactly. I was thinking and, about when you put mm -hmm. that in the notes is like, yeah, a lot of those embedded systems, their kernels start with two. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, they do. <laughs> They're older older kernels, anyways. And mm -hmm. um, I think yeah. I, I have an older mi mixer with uh, um, uh, an older audio mixer from years ago with one of these processors in it, and. Um, <laughs> A couple of my old um, handheld computers uh, that have them. <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of moon processors, uh, <laughs> we, we got to bring this oh, up. Oh, boy. We just absolutely. Oh, yes. We talked talk about, about Microsoft. <laughs> so now we got to talk about Apple. Uh, Apple is moving on from Intel. Now, this isn't directly related to Linux uh, because, well, we know uh, we have an idea of uh, Apple's history. They went on with PowerPC long before everyone else was already in x86. And then they decided, you know what, this x86 thing is probably fine. We can do it. Uh, even if we have to use the BSD kernel to help us do it, we can do that. Um, so now they pulled the complete 180 and they said, you know what, we're going to go back to do our own thing. And it's... They say in the article uh, from The Verse that uh, Apple's abandonment of Intel chips is inevitable. It's not inevitable, but it's Apple. If anyone, you know, uh, knowing their history, they can probably do it. It's Listen, man, Apple gets stuff done. Support. I'm the last person to be an Apple fan, carbon-based entity, but um, <laughs> when Apple killed Flash... Uh, yeah. Everyone's iPhone, like, Apple's yeah. stupid. Apple doesn't know. Apple's going to go out of business now. How many of you are still running Flash? <laughs> but Chrome still supports Pepper Flash, to be fair. Yeah, I'm sure some people like you would even know that. It's a scorched earth policy on Flash. I was happy to see no, it go. It's disabled on mine. It's like, yeah, no. Uh, I'm not having yeah, that on. Way back in the day, in the long, long ago, Apple used to run the Motorola. That's where we had the G series. Mm -hmm. Uh, risk based mm -hmm. and all that fun stuff. Hey, okay, that's great. Uh, but to this, I mean, this is something we could definitely look at from a Linux angle because how many people dual boot Linux on the current Macs? That's a real thing. Yes. So, yeah. uh, first off, you know, Apple's been getting out of the uh, desktop business for a long, long time. They've just been doing it quite covertly. It's like, no, they're going to release that new MacBook Pro any day now. Mm. Not Pro, but the actual <laughs> Pro. That's like nineteen thousand uh -huh. dollars, and no, no. Uh -uh. Second, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what they come up with because out of the companies that can walk in and just like go and drop it in your face. As far as a chip manufacturer, Apple has the talent in house mm -hmm. to do that. Oh, yeah. They've not. I'm not just. They've proven that with the iPhone, um, and they can come up with that now. Just just the announcement like this and not Apple going, no, 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 wait a minute. We're going to stick with this x86-64 business. This is definitely going to hurt x86 Mac desktop mm -hmm. sales, laptop sales, <clears throat> stuff like that, especially on the pro end, what little remains, because most yes. of those are running Hackintoshes, which this is going to kill Hackintoshes. That's just an aside. <laughs> but yep. they're not. They're going to start investing in Windows because you're not going to spend that gang of money only to have nothing really work right later on. Um, third, if I got a little point in that, RIP Mac Gaming, that, that's dead. And, uh, yeah. you know, again, I, Apple, I don't think they care. They, they want to sell you a new iDevice every three years and make that sweet, sweet, sweet yeah. profit. And my, I know uh, I've already had this brought up to me. Is But Microsoft just tried to release the uh, whatever book. 
which was mm-hmm. ARM based that was running Windows 10 short bus edition. Uh, yeah, it's Microsoft. Okay, they they genuinely took an ARM CPU, Snapdragon, whatever, directly out of a mobile phone and slapped a screen on it and folded it in half. Of course, it didn't work right. Um, at least Apple will come out with some custom kit, their own specialized ARM Doritos. I'm just curious. I'm not hopeful. I'm just curious. Maybe all this is for not Jill. They're just going to release Power yeah. 9 desktop. Oh, Lord. Well, this is going to basically kill their high-end uh, uh, graphic user market. What's left of it. You know, what's mm-hmm. left of it. Mm-hmm. And and um, uh, my experience no more VR working at a community Mac college. <laughs> yeah, most of my teachers have moved over to Windows and Linux because because of the state of Apple. But um, um, this is just going to make them more proprietary again. And um, it'll be the death of, the, of their higher workstations, of course. And not to mention, do we really think that an ARM chip can compete with a Xeon? I mean, come on, people. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, an ARM chip? No. A hundred I mean, ARM an, chips? A hundred, yes, many ARM chips. No, this is very, 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 very true. Running at five watts a piece? <laughs> Yeah, and but that's this the makes thing, sense. Is, you know, <laughs> it almost makes sense if you think that Apple's probably going to pull a Google what they're doing now with Chrome mm-hmm. OS, where you can run Android apps in Chrome OS. Mm-hmm. So if Apple designed their own custom architecture, probably going to be based on ARM because hey, they're a licensee, they can do it. Um, but they do that, and they have iOS integration. They have the one operating system that can run iOS and desktop or a laptop uh applications so yeah that sort of kind of makes sense again yeah. again i'm 100 percent. there's one thing i i um, would fight for this point they don't want to make laptops anymore they don't want to make desktops anymore exactly you know. they're looking for they want something that's that's battery efficient <laughs> they want the iPad Pro to succeed. That's what exactly. I'm saying. A They're, company that makes an 12 inch iPad Pro with a stylus, not staying yeah. in the laptop business anymore. I mean, yeah. they, this, just, they, they just, they only care about mobile because that's where they're making their money on. Well, right. And then you have zero chance. I mean, you're completely locked into that <laughs> ecosystem and Apple's, Apple's going to Apple, man. Um, I do think it's a very dying thing. I mean, people, most people you know who have PCs mm-hmm. still and not just straight up mobile devices and that's the only thing they have probably have laptops like big honking towers were a bit of a rarity and yeah <laughs> hate to say it but you Even know that work <laughs> the, the PC gaming industry has been dying since I was like eight and that was a long time ago <laughs> Uh, so back to Linux related stuff. Um, R can, R can do it. Uh, safe spaces, but not the kind you think. That's right. An open source VR desktop. Okay. That, mm. I, I, I don't really know about this, man. Uh, does this make sense outside of VR? He asked question mark. I don't know. Um, VR, even with the release of the vibe Pro and the new resolution, is it ready for, uh, Pedro, are you having a stroke? Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, Pedro doesn't know to cut his volume down. I like messing with him every week. But we're looking at something very minority report. Aww. And it's kind of bendy and flashy and all that. I think our theorist mentioned that it looked a bit like Project Looking Glass from Sun. I remember compiling that, getting yeah. it up and running and going, <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is not ready. But... Yeah, back, actually, go, actually, that was mine. <laughs> okay. Well, back to the <laughs> point is the resolution's just not... No, this is something you could run currently on your desktop and mm-hmm. make it make a thing, but uh, maybe it's something you want to go play with. I have zero interest in this whatsoever, but the whooshy desktop is like, oh, no, that that's Cube 2.0. <laughs> Bump top. It's an interesting read, man, just going through the architecture and how this is set up. I mean, it's a different way of thinking about the issue. What are our thoughts on this? Jill? Yeah, well, for for me, I don't have stereo vision, so none of the VR stuff works <laughs> anyways. But um, but it actually did remind me very much of, like, like Vin said earlier, the Sun's uh, Java-based project Looking Glass 3D Live CD. I I had put that in there because it's it's very similar actually very similar looking, and that was that was put out in like two thousand five so I could see 
I could see that there's a lot of there's um, definitely a lot of similarities be- between uh, this and and that live CD from years ago. <laughs> Yeah, live you know. CD. Come on, amateur. <laughs> yeah. I built it. Don't no, 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 no. <laughs> you know. You know. VR gaming. It, it was VR a long time really ago. gaming has really pushed me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this, seeing like other stuff being done with VR, and you can have a 3D space where you could do like the uh, moving windows around all the time, and the, this the makes sense if you have like. Crazy talk uh, tablet with a beefy enough uh, ARM processor built into the VR headset, and that is your one device. Maybe it uh, it's got big honking battery too to balance no, no, out you the, see, uh, the you, lens weight. You're giving me a gang of problems. You're talking about a future <laughs> I want to live in. I want to live where I can take yeah. you know my sunglasses, yeah. a device like that, throw that on. We're gonna get there, people. And then yeah. you do have this minor. Now here's the thing. You're thinking. Oh, yeah, you want to whooshy and wave around? No, you don't. Trust me, after five minutes of that, things start getting tired. That is a horrible user interface experience for continued use. Yeah. Believe it or not, keyboard gerbil actually makes sense. But for the occasional, like, okay, I need to put this display from here to here, or something like that, yeah, augmented reality is going to be awesome. Yeah. But it's got to get what Pedro was head to get. It's got to be something you can pick up, put on, wear all day. Recharge once a month and uh, mm-hmm. it Julian's fries. I don't know why I said that, but maybe yeah. it does. It's a, it's a value add. <laughs> it it needs to be something like that because yeah. Then at that yeah. point, this allowing you to rearrange windows in a three D space actually makes sense because you don't have to like use the mouse and keyboard to flick around to look at the other uh, at the other windows, but you just turn your head. It's like, oh, all right. Well, once the resolution, the fidelity gets there, having, you know, your 300 plus inch screens to play your games Mm -hmm. on and for the device to be able to sell it to your brain meat and your brain meat's going to buy it. It's like, oh, wow, this is great. And then 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 you don't have like a nightmare situation like I have (laughs) with, you know, you just you just have a chair and you can put it in a corner and rock quietly Mm -hmm. and. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be great, man. Well, so, I want this technology to work. I really do. <laughs> I think we will get there eventually. Uh, just a quick mention: if you are, uh, th- this is going to be out for everyone in a few days, it's, but it's out early right now. Just to mention to the patrons, I said I was going to do this forever ago, and I finally remembered to do it, and I did. It is how we put together uh, Linux Scheme Cast Weekly. Using KDN Live, it's basically me sitting, getting up in the morning, doing this, walking you through the entire process. It's about 18 minutes, 19 minutes. If you're interested in that, that is up at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Like I said, just a quick mention. And you can go check that out. It'll be, we don't like putting stuff behind paywalls. So it'll be out in like five or six days, whenever the um, little bit of early access rolls out. But I thought I would let everyone know about that business uh before we get out of here oh go go ahead joel you gotta say things oh you gotta cut me off you gotta be like shut up i need to talk oh i just wanted to say i thought you did a really beautiful job um there's nothing beautiful about that that is me (laughs) half half a glass of tea in going all right no no No, you, you did it it was really it was really detailed and and you you explained it really well so well, I mean, if you were going to put a tagline on it, I mean, if you ever wanted a particularly bad guide at using some very basic KDE functions, <laughs> KDE and live functions, that that's your bag. Come check that out. We we don't do anything fancy, to be honest. That's uh, one of the reasons for the switching, the audio stuff and all that. Everything's ready by the time we get because I see a lot of people and there's nothing wrong with it because a lot of people do their audio editing, their video editing. And all that inside Katie and live, like it's a bit crashing. I'm like, I bet it is. Uh, <laughs> so we basically use it as a glorified stitching program. Uh, you can technically install Linux on these. Therefore we get to talk about this bit of news. 
Yes, yes you can. Mm -hmm. Well, this is just a really cheap, really nice SSD that Mushkin uh, has released. They called them the Source. And uh, they have uh, 3D NAND TLC, uh, their SATA SSD, so you're still capped at the 520-something megabytes that uh, SATA can do. Oh, no, suppose what I ever do was such horrible. <laughs> it's like, oh, half a gig a second, mm, no idea what I can do with that. Uh, but no, they, they're available in 120, 250, and 500 gig uh, capacities, and they have, uh, which one, which controller are they using? Uh, doesn't mention in the article, but it's probably going to be, I don't know, one of the standard controllers nowadays. They they can all do, uh, like, peak SATA speed. It's just going to saturate whatever uh, particular PCIe lane uh, your SATA connections are running off of. It's just going to be saturated. But the big thing is the price, or the small thing, as the case may be, because the five, uh, 500 gigabyte version comes in at 110 bucks. That's... 22 cents a gig. 110 No, man. Uh, That's pretty awesome. good. Listen, I got a better deal. You can get it for $109.99 on Amazon right now. I know it's an amazing deal. Uh, I, again, not necessarily Linux related, but if you've been looking to get an SSD for 40 bucks. Yes. For boot drive. That's, that's I mean, awesome. Yeah. Three year warranty. And I'm 109 they're going to be releasing a terabyte version. I'm probably not patient enough to wait for that, which I should wait for that. But I, we're in desperate need of another 500 to a terabyte SSD to watch it yeah. die, basically, because we're going to be mm -hmm. writing 70 to 100 <laughs> gigs to it every Saturday, well, Sunday morning when I'm doing the video and exporting it. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Get an SSD if you don't have one. You can trust them. I'm somebody who bought the original IBM drives, the ones where they gave you the firmware update and didn't tell you that it wiped everything. So the OCC then, that, that did that too. To me yeah. That. <laughs> uh, they've gotten better. The technology's good. You plug them in. I mean, 400 meg read write on that. It it's, It'll make a good boot drive. It'll make a great Steam drive. And mm -hmm. seriously, I did not think 2018 was going to be the year that you could pick up a $40 SSD that wasn't complete junk made by a manufacturer from with a name that you can pronounce. <laughs> yes. Yes, you can. And yeah. even the uh, since it's a smaller density SSD, the speeds, uh, especially the write speeds, are going to take a hit mm -hmm. uh, because as you're getting... A, you're not getting as much density, so you can't don't have as many sectors to write parallel to. So... The maximum sequential write speed on the um, 120 gig is 440 megabytes per second, yeah. which is still pretty, pretty, pretty stupid fast. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I don't think anybody in the data center is screaming, boys, go pick up a gig of these. Um, for simple yeah. use, I think yeah, that's pretty there... good. Jill, are, are you going to buy one? Buy two, buy three. Oh 30. yeah, no, actually, I'll I'll buy quite a few of them because these are these are great to to put in um, as boot drives, uh, booting Linux for for cheap rigs. You well, know, cheap gaming rigs. rigs. I mean, <laughs> even if you're building yeah. <laughs> low cost computers, I mean that. Yeah. You want to talk about something yeah. that can make an older PC just feel better? Exactly. Yeah. And, you, and if you're exactly. gonna be picking mm -hmm. any of these up please head over to linuxgamecast.com uh, forward slash support and use one of our fancy uh, affiliate links from multiple countries up to and including the America, Britannia, Canada, Space France, and Germany. Pedro, tell them about it. Yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. You can just uh, hit the link, do your shopping. We get a little bit off the top. And, uh, well, we appreciate you very, very much. There's a whole lot of you that have been using those affiliate links. There's also a Newegg affiliate link if you shop through there. And uh, the, our favorite, most insane, uh, fiscally irresponsible people, <laughs> our Patreons. Yes, there's the penguin. Mm -hmm. uh, all y'all make the penguin happy and dance and, you know, make it rain. <laughs> all our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. They make our You're horse awesome. shenanigans possible. And <laughs> it's the end of the month. We rolled out to a new month. So check your cards and all that fun stuff. Don't worry about us. Just make sure you're not missing like actual bills and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But yeah, if you can kick us a few shekels, that'd be neat. We got some stuff you can get back. You can get access to. We were talking about this on our Tuesday stream that you guys allow us to do. Meet the Freemans. 
We have 60 hours of basically you can straight up fly on the wall. Check us out with our production meetings every week. You get a custom RSS feed and you also get access to uh, the this madness, which I probably shouldn't tell you about is mm-hmm. our discord server. And uh, that that's where the bizarros mm-hmm. like to hang out. I include myself in that. <laughs> the other six days that Jill knows it's a yes. <laughs> sometimes it's best just to watch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> See where the stories go. <laughs> well, it's fun. I think we got like 118, 119 um, party patrons in our Discord. And yes. to see the conversations from high end technical stuff to stuff that I'm not going to repeat <laughs> live going on at the same time and people bouncing back and forth to chime in. I know. In. But thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, so much for making this possible, keeping us ad free, and uh, helping us get Joel on the show. Been a big help. Yes. Yay! It's been awesome. Now, now you can now you can deal with giggling and stereo. I have about six years. It's wild. It's terrifying. All right, let's get into a slice by before we get out of here. It's a little segment where we talk about some embedded oh, yes. goodness, starting with the. Oh, that sounds like a horrible idea. Why are we talking about this? I don't know, but it's a thing. I guess, uh, Susie, we're feeling a bit left out of the whole Raspberry Pi craze. Probably because none of the Raspberry Pis have enough processor juice to run OpenSUSE. But, (laughs) you know, taking pot shots at Susie aside, uh, it was definitely a distro that was kind of, you know, missing support for the famous, famous uh, Raspberry Pi board. And uh, with the Pi Model 3B and uh, B3, uh, 3B Plus, that didn't tie a knot in my brain at all. Uh, uh, they've managed to uh, get some support going. They're uh, clearly targeting this at the whole Internet of Things, embedded devices, not as you would use, say, Raspbian or any of the other uh, Raspbian based distros. They're more end user oriented uh you set them up as like little gaming boxes or even as a uh, desktop for a relative that you don't particularly like well i want to throw this back at our theater and our theater in chat room he's like yo man uh pi susie was on pies yeah but now it's on pi with enterprise support backing it yeah that's Less. the difference that's the value add oh, okay. that you have right now because you can get you know 24 7 support for this so your iot devices whatever you're doing what raging insanity has driven you to install suzy on a raspberry pi now they do say that they're working on b plus so they're going to be rolling out a spin for that um they're also planning to update the io support uh so slash can be installed on a pi over network rather than using the sd card which is a painfully slow way of doing things and i think that's neat good on them it's yeah. I don't know why it took so well, you know, it's just good to have support behind it, but I'm like, what would you have to, what would you, I don't know. <laughs> cool stuff will probably come from this. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can probably build a baby monitor question mark. I don't know. That looks mm-hmm. like a thing. Is is that the new hotness? So hot right now. Build a raspberry mm-hmm. Pi powered monitor more than the average video monitor. This is a DYI. Kid, what does it do? It's going to automate room temperature and control a child's room. I don't know if I trust myself building such a system. That sounds incredibly dangerous if it's a child. It can do that. It Listen. can do just the regular motion sensing if you have the yeah. motion sensing camera. Uh, if I if I was building a... this system to keep my beer cold, maybe. But a, a human child. I don't know, Pedro. I mean, uh, I guess if the camera is uh, good enough, if you detect that your child is shaking, maybe raise the temperature in their room a little bit. You know, just don't cook them alive. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that what you're going to use the pearl for? Detect a vibration and child increase? Oh, okay. Sure. I I, I'm going to give this a TSA acceptance factor of five because, yeah, it looks sketchy, but it also looks Lego-y. So TSA would be like, oh, just hand it to your kid. It'll go right through. You're like, little Timmy made a project. <laughs> and you, you could fill that thing with basically anything. Fill it with whiskey. Um, okay. That's the yeah. Well, this this is actually cool because there's a lot of, a lot of issues with baby monitors. I know there's a lot of... Um, a lot of people have had problems with, with uh, certain brands, and this 
you know, takes it up a notch. It's it's much more sophisticated. And I'll tell you what this really does, awesome. Jill. I'll tell you what this does. This allows you to roll your own security. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you're not trusting mm -hmm. another exactly. company to A, ever push out an update, B, mm -hmm. just completely be wide open with whatever. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, well, it looks delicious. So if you do have a small child, keep it out of arm's reach. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you draw little rabbits on it. Listen, man. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to thin the herd out. <laughs> yeah, just put a, a little thing. It's like, insert here in mouth. Oh. <laughs> uh, don't, don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm fixed. Um, <laughs> that's going to do it. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, head over to, uh, what is it? LennyScheemCast.com. Smash that contact button. We didn't, well, we got some feedback this week, but nothing that really justified putting on the show not there was nothing yeah. wrong with it it was something that i could just go oh here's your question boop oh ooh, ooh, ooh. i have an idea okay. okay jill you've been uh on the show twice now well three times uh yes. including that time you uh what replaced me uh <laughs> so by all means uh what is your feedback as someone who has been here what would you uh, improve? What would you worsen? What would you <laughs> claim? I, I just love the fact that I was trying to get everyone out in under 50 minutes and Pedro just came in with a flying elbow. He's like, no, you're not, Ben. Oh, no. <laughs> Go on, Jill. You're not ducking out of that one. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, um, uh, it, would, it would be actually nice to maybe do some more interviews in the future. Um, I was thinking okay. about that because um, I had some ideas along those lines of people I could interview. In fact, I did interview a few few people at scale. Mm -hmm. So because um, when LWW started, um, you had a lot more interviews like with Iculus and, and Matt Hartley and, and whatnot. And it would be really nice to, to see more of that again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, so that, to so. <laughs> immediately address that, I'll tell you the big thing that kind of curb stomped us. Yeah. was Skype. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it not working with the Windows version. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, Linux was okay. one thing. Now we have this really messed up web. We don't use Skype anymore, if you're wondering. Um, if anyone wants to peek behind the curtains, we are on Discord. We're using Discord for audio and video. Yay. But... <laughs> Yeah, that's doing interviews is definitely something I like to get back. It is infinitely, infinitely more of a hassle because yeah, the average person is mm -hmm. sane and they're not set up to do stuff like that. Exactly. So. Yeah. No, I, I, I knew, I knew some of the reasons why you had to stop doing a lot of those, but it would be nice now that we have better technology and you have better bandwidth, and um, we have the Discord. Um, well, see, that's that the problem. The Discord's going to throw the wrench. Now, I'm all for it. We got to work uh, on it. <laughs> getting somebody to doubt because the average average person, I'm going to ring up and I'm like, hey, man, use Discord. And you're like, what's a Discord? That's an hour long yeah. conversation and setup process right there. It is. Crossing your it fingers. Is. You're like, and I'm on a Mac. And it's like, you know what? I didn't want to talk to you that bad. I'm going to flip Yeah. Discord and I didn't on a Mac. Yeah, I didn't necessarily mean every week. I mean, like maybe like once a month or or every other other we gotta month. Got to set something up. See, this is something I wish yeah. Google would. I'll tell you what really irritates, mm -hmm. and Pedro will attest to this, is not being able to set AGC and like yeah. Hangouts. That would mm -hmm. just make life That's, easy. Just give them a Hangout yeah. link. Stop sure. messing with my input yeah. levels, Google. Right. Come on. I mean, we <laughs> have that problem with like Josh communicating on, with him on yeah. Windows, like, constantly having to ride the volume. But hey, I, I appreciate your feedback, Jill, and we will definitely investigate it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we will take it under oh. advisement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, I will say that all official, official, like this is a real company or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we love you. We'll see you next week. We're going to roll some credits. Come check it out. Bye. <laughs> oh, and um, all uh, y'all's names will show up here. And actually, um, Jelly Bean increased his pledge on, uh, on our Patreon page. So that was a, oh, a yes. plug we, we missed. Yes. 
Oh, we, we yes, and, we and I have to I have to mention that he is my brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you couldn't let it slide. Okay, all right, fair enough. Oh no, Ben's gonna kill me now. <laughs> that would require Ben to go to California, and he just can't. he's banned. <laughs> yes. Sort of. <laughs> oh, what? Thank you very, Sorry. very much. Everyone. What'd you guys say? 